My first guest is well known here in Phoenix as a local business owner and director of Local First Arizona. Please welcome Kimber Lanning to the show. Thanks for joining me, Kimber. Well, thank you for having me. First of all, Kimber, tell us when did Local First Arizona begin? Local First started in 2003 when I started to notice how many bright young people were leaving the valley. And um, I thought, what can we do to better connect them to place? What can we do to make them want to stay here, start their companies, go to work, maybe raise their families, those types of things. So I just started knocking on doors with other local business owners and saying, hey, we provide the type of resources, we provide the kind of personality and unique experience that makes people feel connected to this place. So that was it. I just went, I'm going to do this. And we did it. And, and that's it, that's, that's it, it, huh? Mm -hmm. There's so much work that has to be done. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the priority policies of Local First Arizona. Well, it, you know, they're not immediately obvious, so I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, one of the main things we've worked on is called the adaptive reuse of existing buildings. It's really very important for people to understand that we need to streamline the process to make it easier for entrepreneurs to open up their businesses in older buildings. A lot of these older buildings sit vacant and blighted. We need to figure out a way to usher new businesses businesses into them and part of that is streamlining that process so I've been a big advocate for that and the city of Phoenix has made huge strides in the last few years we've made it so much easier for businesses and another area that we've had a lot of success is procurement we mm -hmm. need to figure out how to do more government business with local businesses, mm -hmm. um, keeping those dollars here recirculating in the community. So I'm proud to say the city of Phoenix is now has a new procedure and all the contracts worth less than $50,000 are going to go to Arizona companies. Staff has been retrained. They, they simply go to a database populated with companies throughout Maricopa County in Arizona. They get three quality bids, so it's still a competitive procedure. Uh, they get three quality bids, go with the lowest, and they're done. That is going to do an additional 18 or 19 million dollars in new business right here in the community, and that's hugely important. It's very kind of you to give so much credit to the city of Phoenix, but frankly, you know, I've said it all along, public input is not a box that simply gets checked. We should be governing based on public input, mm -hmm. and really, Kimber, you need to take some credit, speaking of public input, and really staying with and, and helping the city of Phoenix find its way into where we are now and, and in, in the future when it comes to helping local businesses. Uh, for those that are watching, give us some of the benefits. Now you've given a lot of, lot of the benefits for the community, for the city of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits for joining Local First Arizona? Sure, so we are, today we're a collection of 2,300 locally owned businesses, small, medium, and large. So big Arizona companies like Bashes and Shamrock Foods and Hickman's Family Farms and mm -hmm. even GoDaddy and little companies are all involved. So we create a database that gets searched 41,000 times a month. That's not just hits to our website. That's people looking for 41, local solutions. 41,000 people a month looking at that database and wow. searching for a local solution. We also have 40,000 social media followers and we can help people promote their business that way. So there's a lot of different ways that we can help you grow your business. Mm -hmm. uh, for all of our viewers, mm -hmm. plain and simple, why is it so important for all of us to support local business? Well, this is such a great question. It's important that people understand when they spend their money with a local business, it stays and recirculates in the community up to four times more uh, because the local business then in turn hires a local accountant or a graphic designer or a web developer, and that creates jobs. You could have 30,000 locations of a chain here. If they're not headquartered here, they're not gonna support any secondary jobs, uh, those jobs that support businesses like a accountants, bookkeepers, graphic designers, etc. So those are dollars recirculating and every time they change hands they create additional tax revenue for city services like parks and libraries and fire departments. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Where can we learn more about Local First Arizona? Our website is localfirstaz.com and uh, right there there's tons of information on economic studies, the database, all the information you need to answer all those questions you might have. Kimber, for the business owners who wish to join Local First Arizona, Tell us how they would go about doing that. It's incredibly easy. On our homepage at localfirstaz.com, if you scroll down just a little bit, look for the large green join button on the left-hand side. That'll take you to a page that tells you the benefits of membership, and then there's a form that you can fill out. It's incredibly uh, inexpensive to join the organization. Well, Kimber, as you know, on every DTV episode, we go out and we visit a local business in the district. I'm sure some of those businesses are members of Local First Arizona. Uh, I look forward to uh, interviewing more of your members Absolutely. in the district. Thank you so much for what you're doing for all of us. Well, thank you for having me. Coming up next, we'll find out about a unique organization offering a safe, 
comfortable home to homeless mothers-to-be. Keep watching DTV.